So in this second of a series of tutorials, we're going to look at making this glass text effect, which we will then save to the effects folder, not the titles folder, and have it editable on the edit tab. Okay. So again, we're going to need our clip. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to actually drop it down so that it's just two seconds long. The reason being that I'm going to animate it using anim curves. And in my experience, anim curves is very good at stretching, but not particularly good at shrinking. So if you make your animation as short as possible. You're unlikely to want this effect to last for two seconds or less. You're more likely to want it longer. And I'm also just for the sake of keeping frame numbers tidy, I'm going to make a new fusion clip. You don't have to do this. It just makes things a bit tidier. So we've got our clip on the timeline and we're going to go into fusion. It's not dissimilar to the video in text idea in that you need to bring this media into some text. The way I'm going to do it this time is I'm going to bring in a background node, which I'm going to set to transparent. I'm going to merge my footage onto the background node, which gives this, which doesn't do very much. But now I'm going to take a text node and I'm going to pipe that text node into the mask of the merge. And now when we input some text, you can see that we've got a similar effect to the video in text that we had previously. And tweak this as needed. Now I'm going to bring the output of this merge node and bring it back onto the output of media one. And as you can see in our output, we've got our text, except you can't see it. So what we need to do is make it somehow that you can see it. So there's a couple of things we can add in. First one is a transform node. And we're going to put the transform node or our merge node. I don't know if you noticed there what I did. Let's get rid of it. If you drag your node in and hold your mouse pointer over the pipe, it changes color. Once it changes color, if you let go, your node is attached. Now, what we can do with this transform node is we can slightly increase the size like so. And that gives almost a refractive effect that you would get or that you would expect from glass. So that now when we move it, you get the sort of refraction that you would get from glass. Next thing I'm going to add to this is a blur node. Again, drag it in onto the line and let go. And you can use the blur to simulate a sort of frosting on the glass. And finally, I'm going to press shift space bar and type soft and add a soft glow. And that just picks the text out a bit better. And again, you can tweak these values to give the desired effect. or look that you're after. And obviously the soft glow by its nature is also a blur node. So it's balancing the two. The last thing I'm going to put in is a drop shadow. So select your merge, shift space bar, drop shadow, boom, in you go. 
and this just lifts the text up a bit and you can again tweak these settings to get the look that you want just to get a sort of a bit of depth to your text and that's basically it the thing I did, and again, it's purely optional, is I added an animation to this. Uh, it's just a simple animation where the text comes in from one side, holds in the middle and goes out the other. And I'm going to do that using a combination of um, modifiers on the text node. So select your text node, go to the layout tab, and where you've got center, you need to separate the X and Y so you can use them independently. So right click center, modify with XY path. If you now come to the top and click the modifiers button that's lit up, double click on each to get rid of any keyframes. And it's the X value that we're going to be modifying. So right click on X, modify with anim curve. And this opens up a new set of modifier um, controls. You want source to be duration. You want curve to be custom. And in the graph, click two points to add two extra um, points to your graph. The first point, click it and type in the boxes 0.25 and 0.5. And then the second, you're going to type 0 0.75 and 0 0.5. What this does now is as we're playing through our text, is it brings the text across the screen and holds it for a while in the middle, but obviously it's not going far enough back here. So to do that, you come down to your output, or sorry, not your output, your offset. You're going to set your offset to minus 0.5. So now it starts right off the screen and no matter how big your text is, the whole screen's moved off. It comes in. Oh, it's holding in the wrong place and it won't go out far enough. So what we need to do to combat that is come to scale make that two. So now you've basically got two screens of movement across the length of the clip. We can click on the graph on one of the buttons on one of the nodes, hold the control key and click on the second one and then press shift and S and that will add some easing and we can do the same with the other two. So click the first, press and hold control and click the second shift s and it adds some easing so the final element i added was the little white sort of glint on the text um the way i did that was i got a background node i got a rectangle mask and i masked the background like so Make your background node white. Select your rectangle. Drop the height considerably. Make the width two. And then rotate it at whatever angle you want. And then merge that back onto your text layer. So now we have this white line goes across our text, select the rectangle and just crank up the soft edge on it to give a highlight. I also animated this. To do that, come to your rectangle, again, center, modify with XY path, come into your modifiers, 
double click X and Y to get rid of any keyframes. Right click X and modify with anim curve. Come to merge node and we're going to change the operator to a top. And that just puts your highlight over your text like so. Now the way I animated it was I had it coming in the opposite direction. So come into your rectangle, go to your modifiers. You've got your anim curve modifier here, change it to duration. We can leave it at linear for this one and just change the scale to minus one. And your offset to one, like so. And that's your basic effect. So now we need to save it as a macro. The most important part of this is if you come to your media in, you notice that it splits into two. One is your main um, footage and the other is our effect. Now, if we're saving this to the effects library, it has to have only one input, otherwise it gets all confused. So the way we ensure that is we bring our mouse just after the media in one, press and hold the Alt or Option key and click the pipe. This gives us this little square, which is called a pipe router. So basically a pipe router has one input and then like any node, you can have multiple outputs. If we include that pipe router in our macro, the effects has one input and one output and you're away to go. Again, like we did with the video in text, we select our nodes in the order that we want the controls to appear. So we will select our text first, press and hold the command or control key. And then I'm going to go with transform, which will give us our refraction strength, blur and soft glow. Then you can just pick the others in any order. It doesn't matter. But again, making sure you include the pipe router, but you don't include the media in or the media out. Right click. Go to macro, create macro, give it a name. And now we work through what controls we want. So again, with text, we want style, font and font style. We want size, tracking and line spacing. We can include in our anim curve. No, let's do it in the XY path. We can include a Y value in the XY path. That way you can move it up and down if you want to. Then we come to transform and we want size. And we're going to rename that to re we're going to save that so activate that then we've got our blur and you can have blur size and we've got our soft glow and we can have gain and glow size and then we don't need anything in these again come up to the file menu save as group again Fusion is trying to save into the macros folder, so you need to come back a couple of levels. This is how you do it on Mac, how you do it on Windows, I'm not sure. So come back to the DaVinci Resolve folder. Come down, look for Fusion, Templates. You've got Edit. Then you've got Titles, Effects, Generators and Transitions. We're not going to put it in the Titles folder, we're going to put it in the Effects folder. As I said in the last video, if you're on 17.4, you can create a new folder, call titles and stick it in there. So at this point you'd hit save. I'm not going to because I've already made it. This will disappear. This 
you can close and then if you come to your templates edit effects you've got your titles folder that i've just mentioned and you've got your text in there so come back to the edit tab find and bring in a clip Clip length doesn't matter. What matters is how long you want your title to appear for. So decide where you want your title to start. Hit Command Control V to make a cut. Come forward however long you want your title to be on screen for. Make another cut. And now we can drop our title onto this clip. So come to Effects, Titles, and find your glass text. Drag it over and drop it on your clip. And away you go. And it's as simple to use as that. Obviously, once you've got your title up, let your clip come to Effects, and you've got all your settings that you can change. So you, you can change your text, your font, size, etc. You can change how much refraction you have. You can change the strength of your frosting or blurring and you can adjust the glow as well if you need to. So that's that. There is an alternative way of using it. If you don't want to be cutting your footage, what you can do is if you get an adjustment clip and bring it in, you can then add your effect to the adjustment clip. A preference I prefer to use the clip itself but that's up to you. The other thing you can do to speed things up if you have applied your title this works with any effect if you right click render cache fusion effect filter and then select whatever the effect is and it will cache it for you and it just makes sort of playback a bit quicker. Cool so again I hope you found it helpful Please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.